Hello and welcome to the show. I am here today on Forza Horizon 3 kind of building a hill climb monster. You see, I saw in the comments of the last video a really, really interesting challenge for this uh, this series. We are going to leave the building of the car up to the game. I'm going to use the auto upgrade feature to prepare this car for S1 class. Now, before I do go and auto upgrade it, I am going to put on the two required upgrades. So we are going to make the car all-wheel drive, we are going to put the car on snow tyres. I don't think the game will auto upgrade to these, so uh, we are going to make sure we have these ready because they are by far and away the most important thing. But the likes of suspension and so on, that's on the game. I'm hoping it'll give me rally suspension, I'm not sure it will, but there we go. So they are the required parts. Now, I have the Nissan 370Z. I picked a slightly higher PI car for the specific reason that the game will not auto-swap the engine out. So I need a car that I know is going to get up to the top of S1 class or with its engine. Uh, after these, though, I don't know what else the, the game might put on the vehicle. It might give us tyre widths, it might not. It might give us weight reduction. We 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 don't know whatsoever. So I didn't actually know that the game uh, would do, like, if you put on... I, I thought it would just automatically, like, remove your parts and put on whatever it wanted. I didn't actually realise it kept them. So, yeah, this does actually work, which is quite cool. Uh, don't show the message there. Right. We are going to make it S1 class. It's going to calculate some upgrades. It reckons it wants to give us 510 horsepower, 2,800 pounds. I mean, on the face of it, that's not too terrible. On the face of it, I, that's not the worst stats imaginable, but I am curious to see what it might have done. So before we go out and drive with it, I'm going to have a poke around. I believe if we go now into custom upgrade, we can probably... Oh, dear. <laughs> Seen how low it is. That's not good, is it? Oh, bugger. You're on race suspension. Oh, game. Why would you do this to me? I suspect we are on... We're on full weight reduction. Have we got full race brakes? We do. Thank you, game. That's that's one positive. Do we have big tyre widths? That's a yes. We have, Do we have maximum tyre widths all around? We do. 275 front, 295 rear is nice. We... Well, there is the suspicious lack of Forza Aero, which isn't great. I would, I would have liked some... Uh, some aero, but there we go. That is that is not to be the case. Uh, I don't think it'll do uh, aspiration conversions either. I'm pretty sure it won't touch the conversions. I'm guessing we're... Okay, we've only got one stage of exhaust on there. We have a couple of stages of camshafts. We've got bugger all in the way of torque, I've just noticed. Um, 376. That's it. That's all of it. And uh, that's, what, half? Half have we got from the Pontiac? Yeah, about, about that, because I think the Pontiac had the same amount of power as it did torque, which was in the 700, so... <laughs> okay, so it's kind of a middling upgrade on just about everything in the engine. Big tyre widths, weight reduction, but race suspension and no aero. Well, we're going to see how this how this car manages. I'm not sure it's going to be massively quick, but we could be wrong. Maybe the game knows better than I do. Well, I think I am just about ready to tackle our hill climb course with the 370Z. I'm going to get three runs up the Devil's Corners hill climb in an attempt to go as fast as possible. Now, my main target with this car is to get under the two-minute mark. That is around 25th place on the table. Jaguar XJ220 is a two-minute point or one. If we can go faster than that... That would be a pretty good goal. Our fastest ever time up here is the BMW 507 with a 155.9 that is going to be well out of reach, I would imagine, with our <laughs> Nissan. Yeah, we're not going to be getting near that. The BMW was lighter and far, far more power. So we're not going to be challenging the top of the table. This is all going to come down to just how well does this car drive with the, uh, the race suspension. Now, I have done investigations in the past, and off-road suspension is, as you can imagine, better when it comes to dealing with uh, with dirt and with the snow. It's uh, how much time we uh, might potentially lose from that that is a uh, quandary, along with how much time we might lose from the lack of aero pass. Again, done tests, and aero will be helping the car on the run up this uh, course. It doesn't actually drive too badly. I will give the Nissan that. It is... I've not driven it amazingly well through that double apexed corner, but it isn't driving too terribly. How are we straight line speed wise? We are struggling. So we've seen 120, we've seen 130 miles an hour at some cars. Generally, 120 is what we're looking for down there, and we're 10 miles an hour 
below that. We hit a big bump across that section. It's 97 miles an hour across the jump. So we definitely, definitely, definitely do not have the straight line speed. We do not have the acceleration. That is perhaps not too surprising. We uh, don't have the greatest power to weight ratio in here, sadly. However, it is nice to drive through the corners. In many ways, much like the XJ220, it's a, it's a nice car to drive up here. In that, Statistic-wise, I think this is quite similar to the Jag. It's a nice enough car to actually drive if you're not looking for or not looking at the lap times, or stage times in this case. Because, yeah, it drives good, but I'm not sure overall we're going to get the pace. It's very quick off the icy straight, and actually very easy to get it off the icy straight nicely as well, which has flummoxed a few of vehicles of oh, late as we head around the penultimate corner, try and straighten it up for the final turn, and the run towards the line. Ooh, it's not a terrible start. It's not a terrible start. Two minute point one. In fact, we've gone faster than the XJ220 all already. Definitely a couple of places I could improve upon on that run as well. I think we might be able to get this uh, auto-upgraded car sub two minutes, maybe even to the low 159s with a really, really good run. So as we head on to our second attempt, if we are going to get any speed from this car, it is all going to come in the corners. Let's face it, there is just not the acceleration. We were doing almost 130 in the last car to tackle this, uh, uh, we don't have to the no, we won't do 130 here. What was it to do with 130 by turn one? I can't, so many cars have got up this course, something crazy and lightweight. Um, I can't remember now what it was that was doing that towards turn one. I've had a complete and utter brain fart, but never mind. Um, yeah, we've not got the acceleration. We know that. We know we don't have a huge amount of acceleration at all in this car. However, what we do have is decent enough composure through the corners. So this double apex one, I reckon we can get quite a lot of speed out of. We can actually chuck it into the first part flat out and then kind of gradually bring the speed back. We weren't very good through the opening hairpins, I think. That has cost us a little bit. We are much better on our way through that section. And that should mean that we have got more speed coming down these straights. So if we can carry more speed through the corners, we don't have to try and uh, pick up as much when we get out of them because, yeah, we can't, basically, up towards this. That's more like it. See, we're almost 100 miles an hour across that uh, jump. Again, chuck it into the hairpin. Oh, we chucked it a little bit too hard there. It's worth a try. I don't think we were good enough through the opening hairpins. I think we were too slow uh, down there. We're going to have a little bit of a lock-up. Sure, second gear is the best option around there. Again, we're just chucking the car in, and it has got enough grip, even without the extra downforce from the Forza Aero, we have got enough grip to be throwing the car about it again. We're flat out onto the icy straight, which not everything can do. Big problems! That's race suspension for you. Oh, crap. <laughs> really big problems. I don't know what bump we hit, but we hit something very hard that launched us into the air, and then I can't get off the ice, and we're going into the wall. Damn. Uh, we didn't go for a complete spin, but... Uh, yeah, that is, that is race suspension. The suspension has been doing pretty well around here. However, we hit those bumps wrong, and that's going to cause us a world of pain. Yeah, up until then, I think we were quicker in some places and worse in others. Overall, yeah, I, I, I do think we can get under the two minutes. We just need to be mindful of those horrible, horrible bumps. Well, once more, the pressure is very much on for our final run, as I must keep the Nissan out of trouble, which is easier said than done when you uh, have a car on, well, less than ideal suspension configuration. But it is it is what it is. As I said, you know, this, all things considered, is not as bad as it could be. Certainly I have driven cars far worse on uh, race suspension around the snow, around the dirt. Now we need to try and make up as much time as we can through these hairpins. The issue is, things like the Pontiac GTO, yeah, they might not have had the uh, grip that this did ultimately through the corners, but because they had so much power, they could accelerate up the hill so very, very well that this can't quite do on the exit of some of these corners. We were very quick on the way in there. I've taken a very wide line trying to maintain any momentum I can on the exit. I think it's okay, but it's not quite uh, ideal as we slow down. It's only 111 miles an hour. We are... Oh, 
<laughs> that is about as close as you can get to the wall. I don't know, there might be a little bit of paint. Might be a little bit of red and white paint and blue paint and however many colours there are in this car on that wall. I don't really know, I don't really care as we come around the hairpin. Yeah, you see, we, we keep up with the ghost flags are okay for the start for the first sector. In fact, we have to see that in general with cars, but we really struggle through this mid sector. Again, these are very, very steep hills, which the Nissan does not have, just doesn't have the sheer power to uh, pull itself up as well. Now, we should be flat out across this hill. Got a little bit of understeer mid-corner. Got away with it, though, as we head onto the icy straight. Big, big bumps for the car now as we head off of it, try and carry that momentum once more up towards this back jump. 99 miles an hour isn't too bad because it is very, very good off of the icy straight. Jump on the brakes, get the car stopped, get the car turned through these final couple of corners and it's the run to the line. What is it going to be? It is a low 59. I think it was a 59-2 in the end. 59-2-5-3. For the 370Z, that is not actually too bad at all. I'm quite impressed with the uh, <laughs> with the car. Yes, it is down towards the bottom of the table. That is true. It goes in to 21st place. However, it beats the Ford Transit. It beats the Fiat 131 of Arthur, Volvo V60, the Skyline R33. And we only lose out fractionally. And I'm only to I'm going less than a tenth of a second to the Aston Martin, the Vantage V600, the Delta S4, the Mark One Escort, uh, the Race Motamo even is only half a second down the road. And you know, all of those cars were built specifically to deal with the snow, built specifically for this course, and that car was not. It's, uh, yeah, it's an interesting challenge. I am... <laughs> it's, it was a curious car to, uh, to take. I really thought that race suspension would screw us over horrendously, and well, it did kill us on one run. I, I thought overall we would be really struggling for speed, especially on a course like this, where it is very rough. I think the bigger issue for the Nissan was it simply didn't have the power and the torque and so on to really propel itself up some of the steeper hills. I think that's where we lost out massively. We could make up some time through the corners, but when you've got you know, seven, 800 horsepower cars that are lighter than this, bigger tyres and so on, they're always likely to be just that bit quicker getting out of the corners and they can put their power down better because they're on better suited suspension and all of that. Yeah, this was always likely to struggle, but it is nowhere near as far down as I feared it might end up going. So, yes, thank you to uh, whoever it was who commented that uh, on the last video for this challenge. It has been a, uh, a certainly an interesting one. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.